Thousands of migrant workers are believed to be abusing the UK visa rules by working in fake care homes. The outgoing Chief Inspector of Borders and Immigration, David Neal, said the Home Office had issued 275 visas to a residential home that did not exist and thousands more to other dodgy workplaces. Joining me to discuss this, Mike Padden, Chair of the Independent Care Group. Mike, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, Ian. Um, for years, I've heard kind of rumblings around this sector. I'm sure this is not fully uh, new news to you either. What, what do you assess is actually happening here? Well, one can't believe the figures that have just been released in terms of uh, all those issues of visas to A, a company that didn't exist, and A, another company that uh, only had a few employees. It beggars belief because one only has to check um, with the Care Quality Commission to see if these are actually bona fide employers in the yeah. care system. So I wonder how the Home Office has not put that basic plan into place before this happened, because you can't condone the abuse of the system. It's not right. It shouldn't happen. Yeah, and you'd have thought, I mean, I, I, it may come as no surprise, I've never worked at the Home Office as a civil servant, but I would imagine if that is your sole responsibility, you know, you had one job under that category, then at some point in the process of issuing a visa, somebody might say, well, let's just check out the place that these people are purporting to be working at. Nobody did that? It would appear not. And now is they have been told to check with the Care Quality Commission, but you would have thought that was in place from day one because it's basic knowledge. It's another, uh, or, although slightly removed from government, it's another official body that one can check because to give and provide social care in this country, you have to be regulated by the Care Quality Commission. Yep. No bones about it. I mean, one version of th th this story I heard, and I I've heard constantly, is that there are some sort of, I don't know, iffy agencies, and put me right, I'm sure you know the, the rights from the wrongs of this, Mike. Um, some agencies say, it, it get people over to the UK uh, with the promise of, you know, there is work in the care sector. Get paid a fee for supposedly ticking the box for the Home Office. Oh, look, we've got some more care workers for you. And then renege on that and say, ah, no, we those jobs don't exist anymore, but don't worry, there's some Uber driver jobs going down the road, that kind of thing. Are you familiar with that, Mike? Well, I'm aware that has happened in many places. What I'm worried about, it then uh, makes all providers in social care sort of be demonised because True. of what's happened in the past. We need those social care staff. And I'm worried about what the government might do is making it even more difficult for us to recruit because... Of course, we want to recruit people from overseas, but we would dearly love people in this country to work in social care. But sadly, yeah. we can't attract them. And that's another huge issue we could debate all day, perhaps. But we've got to do something about attracting people in this country. And the government, not just this government, but all governments have ignored, all political parties have ignored the social care crisis, mm. which is why we're having to recruit from overseas. Yeah, I was about to make that very point, actually, that, that, that there's no way around this. It, you know, forget what people's wider views are on <laughs> immigration and the, uh, the, the policies that the Home Office and various other bodies enact, that the raw reality is we don't have enough people working in that sector. No. There's not enough people and domestically. And recruiting yeah. from abroad has become an inevitability, Mike. Yes, I think the sad fact today is, and it applies both to the NHS and to social care, if you want to be cared for later, particularly in older age, then we don't have enough staff in this country. And I'll give you another figure. Uh, by 2035, it's estimated that we'll need a further... 450,000 staff in social care to cope with the increasing population of those aged 65 and over. So that's quite stark. How many did you say there, Mike? Sorry, what was that figure? Four, 440,000, sorry, 440,000 wow. people needed by 2035. That is an extraordinary number, um, as you it say. Is. That, and and that is the, well, that's the direction of travel. That's a fact, right? Yes, and it, it's, to, it's to be um, welcome that we're all living longer, of course, but... Uh, those aged 65 and over are going to be a tremendous um, uh, workload for the future of this country. And I think what the government tends to, to miss is there's an economic aspect to this too, because if people have got to give up their jobs to look after their yeah. elderly parents or relatives, then that brings people out of the economy and the workforce. So the government doesn't have an answer to us. Um, that's the problem. There isn't a plan B. Yeah, there is no plan B. Listen, Mike, thank you for your time.